How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ben Burnside Show. Coming at you from my room in Fresno. I am here to do kind of a follow-up to my video that I did of uh, the Georgia Republican Senator David Perdue and his uh, his questionable, uh, well, his the accusation that he faces in a report from Forbes, at least from Forbes, uh, on uh, on receiving a fund from from a, a lobbyist that represents a financial group that funds for his uh, his Senate committee. Um, I'm getting the same kind of issues, relatively the same kind of issues, from the other uh, Georgia Republican senator that's currently in office, and is also currently in a very a very important election for the country. Uh, senator Kelly Loeffler from Georgia. Uh, we're getting reports, and this is off the Huffington, this is off HuffPost.com. Uh, normally I don't trust, I don't know about the HuffPost, just like how I don't know about Forbes. But this story, unlike even the story before, is a story that's been approved by, by people on uh, that rising talk show, and, which, is, uh, from, which is a talk show that's based off the most reliable paper that I, in my opinion, and that's the Hill newspaper. So if the Hill newspaper supports this story, then I am all for it as well. Uh, at least I'm willing to trust it. Uh, the title for this is Senator Kelly Loeffler's husband bought stock in sectors set to benefit from then secret bill. And this is from, uh, this is from a, a political reporter, apparently, uh, that worked for HuffPost. Her name is Molly Redden, so go ahead and check out the article. I'm going to read a little bit right now, but because uh, just to give you kind of a description of what's going on here. Uh, let's see. In mid-March, with the American con economy in freefall from the coronavirus, Jeffrey Sprecher, who's the husband of Senator Kelly Loeffler, and chair of the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange, yeah, Ke Senator Kelly Loeffler is loaded, made an unusual change to his stock portfolio. He started buying. For weeks, the couple had done almost nothing but sell. Loeffler was one of the several senators who faced public outrage for unloading millions of dollars in stock before most Americans understood the towering threat posed by the COVID pandemic. Yeah, that was reported like, on national news like seven months ago. So I remember that. I, I forgot that she was one of the two senators that did that. Uh, the other one, I think, I think he was a senator or at least he was a, a House of Representative. Uh, his name is Richard Burr. Uh, then shortly before the CARES Act, a, a $2 trillion emergency stimulus package was introduced in the Senate. Her husband reversed course and purchased up to a million dollars in new shares, a HuffPost investigation has found. The terms of the CARES Act were still mostly a secret, known primarily to Republican senators while members of their party crafted their legislation. But in the days before the bill's introduction, Sprecher managed to invest in several industries, uh, insurance and energy, that were poised to take advantage of the bill's very specific provisions. Wow. So this this was total insider trade. How could Loeffler would have had to tell him if this, that was the case? Those purchases are just the latest to raise questions about whether Loeffler, the Senate's richest member, uh, has ever used inside the insider knowledge she gleans on Capitol Hill to inform her own per portfolio. Loeffler is locked in an intense runoff election in Georgia that will help decide which party controls the U.S. Senate when President-elect Joe Biden is sworn into office, and her challenger, Democrat Raphael Warnock, uh, I believe that's how you spell his name, his, you pronounce his name, has made accusations that she uses her seat for personal enrichment, a constant theme of his attacks. I mean, I bet they're effective. Uh, trading on non-public congressional information is illegal, the very idea is so corrosive that many lawmakers forego trading in individual stocks altogether. I don't want to read the rest of it. Uh, it's pretty damning enough, honestly. But if you want to read the whole thing, go ahead and go to Molly Redden's uh, uh, article on HuffPost. You know, 
I don't have much to say about this person. Um, she just seems to be someone who I can't really trust, uh, who is someone who, boy, why would you do that? Why would you endanger your own political position for a million dollars when you own $500 million, when you're worth $500 million? Why would you do that? It just seems like a dumb idea. So, uh, yeah, it just, it's kind of crazy how they just are willing to endanger their own position, their own reputation, just for that, for money that they would consider measly. You know, this is the richest woman in the Senate, the richest person in the Senate. Um, let's see, is there anything, I feel like I should, I don't know if I could read the whole thing, but, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, there was a, a lock, so Lockwood was in a debate uh, last night, or a few nights ago, and uh, she she was pressed on Warnock, Warnock, pressed by Warnock, and Warnock said that uh, you can't, that we should make uh, trading illegal for people that are in Congress, and Warnock kind of defended uh, that uh, the stance of trading for people in Congress, like it's the American dream or something like that. So, uh, you know, definitely not somebody that seems trustworthy in Congress. She doesn't seem to really care about the American people more than herself and her own worth. But look, my stance on sometimes in life is in order to look at, want to look after people, you sometimes have to look after yourself. Kelly Loeffler is not in that position to where she could say that. I mean, she's worth $500 million. She has enough money to where she could aggressively run for the Senate. If you, can, if you are rich enough to run for the Senate, you don't need to look after yourself. That's the motto I kind of get from the Senate. So, I don't know, because they all, they're all rich to me. So, I don't know. It just seems like a, an interesting thing here. I... I don't know if I could read the whole article. I'll have to look that up. But again, that I just wanted to point this out to you guys because I found this out today. This, another Republican senator. I don't know about the Democrats. I'm not saying they're clean. So I, I need to look them up too. But the, the Republican senators in these Senate races in Georgia, both of them have relatively dirty records financially relatively dirty records, and they don't seem to get much done in Congress either. So they don't really seem to be outspoken or anything like that. So with that, with them not wanting to pursue policy, and then if they don't want to pursue policy and actually be productive in Congress, then we're going to look at how, then the next thing we're going to do is look at how clean you are. At least that's what I'll do. What's your track record like? And uh, if it doesn't look pretty like this, I don't think you should be in the Senate. That's just my opinion. And apparently this woman ha doesn't have charisma for days, so that's another problem. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't look too good. Doesn't look too good. I hope I hope the Democratic candidates are are will be effective for the people, unlike apparently this one and David Perdue. So I, I'm not trying to vote for them, but because I don't know who they are, they could be just as... Uh, non-transparent as many other Democrats are, but these two, from what I found, I'm not very confident at them with them being current senators. Alrighty, guys, what do you think about this news of Kelly Lawford? Um, did you have any faith to begin with? What? Uh, give me your thoughts about the whole situation down below. Let me know. I'd love to be a part of the conversation, so go ahead and let me know down below. While you're at it, go ahead and like and subscribe to my YouTube video at Ben Burnside. And uh, go ahead and watch all my other reactions and discussions on my channel. Uh, you won't be disappointed. And also go ahead and check out my other uh, YouTube channel, Garage Guys Sports Talk, where I talk about the world of sports uh, with my co-host Jesse Allison in, in his garage. The biggest, uh, the biggest channel of bullshitting ever. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, you can listen to the audio versions of that on Anchor, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, where they have exclusive content that you can listen to. Alrighty, guys, until then, I'll catch you on the burn side. Stay well, stay safe, 
and I will see you in the next video. Peace.